Dorothy, and I am so excited to see you today. To get things started, I'm thinking that it's time to shout out super duper loud, hey friends, because you're my friend and I hope that I'm your friend. So on the count of three, I wanna hear it super duper loud. Here we go, one, two, three, hey friends. Whoa, that was awesome. You know, I just love being here with you. Yeah, when we're together, we get to listen to an amazing Bible story and we get to dance to some rock and music. But before we do any of that, we have fun together. That's right, it's time to play a game. So I have three doors here, a yellow door, a blue door, and a red door. Can we all count them together? Let's count, here we go. One, two, three. Good job. So we are gonna open the doors one at a time and whatever we find behind the doors, whatever it is, you and I have to act it out together. Oh, it's gonna be so much fun. Okay, so I want your help. Which door do you think that we should pick first? What do you think? You think one, two, three? What you thinking? What you thinking? Oh, okay, well, I don't know about you, but number three looks pretty cool. Okay, I think that we should open door number three. Let's see what's inside the door. Do you know what that is? Okay, so now we have to act out being a fish. All right, so so they make really silly faces, right? It's like, yeah, kind of like that. <laughs> okay, so now we have to swim around. Here we go. Oh, you friends make amazing fish. Okay, now it's time to open our next door. What do you think? Should we open door number one? Or should we open door number two? Yeah? Okay, okay, well, I don't know about you, but number one looks pretty good. Okay, let's open door number one. Let's see what's behind the door. Do you know what that one is? Yes, it is a frog. Okay, so frogs, they're green, they're slimy, and they jump up and down a lot. And they also sound, what do they sound like? It's like, it's like, ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. Okay, so now we have to act out being some frogs. Here we go. We gotta hop up and down. Let's do it. Ribbit, 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 ribbit. <laughs> That's silly. You friends did awesome. All right, it is time to open our final door. I cannot wait. Door number two. Let's see what's behind it. Okay, so elephants are super duper big and they have a really long nose. So it's time to act out being an elephant. Here we go, let's do it together. Oh, oh yeah. And yeah, just like that. Keep being an elephant. Oh, I am. <laughs> that one was awesome. Okay, well, I had the best time checking out what was behind each of these doors, but now, the fun's not over yet because it is time for an amazing Bible story just for you. So now it's time to take a seat and get comfy and let me see your hands. And open, shut them, open, shut them. Give a little clap. <laughs> open, shut them, open, shut them. Put them in your lap. It looks like we're all ready. Hey friends, my name is Daniel and I am so excited to tell you what I was reading in my favorite book. Do you know what my favorite book is? Yeah, it's the Bible. The Bible is so important because it helps us know how much God loves us. And I was reading the Bible and I read about a bunch of brothers in a really, really big job that someone had to do. You see, there is a man named Samuel who loved God. God told Samuel it was time for a new king, and God would show Samuel exactly who the new king should be. So God sent Samuel to Jesse's house. Jesse had eight sons. Uh, can you count to eight with me? 
Awesome. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Awesome, good job. So Jesse had eight sons and God had chosen one of them to be the brand new king. And this was very exciting. So Jesse called for his oldest son to come out and meet Samuel. When Samuel saw Jesse's first son, the oldest son, he thought that this son would surely be the one that God would choose to be the new king. So let's see if God chose son number one to be the new king. Okay, nope. God told Samuel that son number one was not the new king. Samuel was surprised, but he kept on looking. So Jesse brought out his second son. He might have been big and strong too, and I bet he looked like he could be a really good king. So let's see if God chose son number two to be the new king. Nope, it's not him either. God told Samuel that this was not the new king. So Samuel moved on to the third son. Uh, do you think that he'll be the new king? Mm, no, it's not him either. But okay, so what about son number four? Maybe he was really smart. Maybe he would be a good king. But God did not choose him either. So Samuel went to the next son. Could son number five be the new king? No, no, he wasn't the right one. Let's check out son number six. Maybe he'll be the new king. No, it's not him. Son number seven was the last son there for Samuel to see. So he must be the new king. No, no, God told Samuel that son number seven was not the new king. Wait just a second. Uh, how many sons did Jesse have? I read that Jesse had eight sons, right? Uh, how many sons do we have here? Uh, can you count them with me? Awesome. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, wait, that means there has to be one more son. Samuel asked Jesse if he had any other sons. Jesse said that he did have one more son named David, but he was out in the field taking care of the sheep. Samuel wanted to meet this son, so they brought David to Samuel. You see, David was much smaller and younger than his brothers. He sure didn't look like he could be the next king, but God wasn't looking for someone that might have been strong and tall and maybe even super smart. No, you see, God was looking for someone that was kind and loving and that loved God. Yeah, that's right. God knew that David was kind and loving and that David loved God so much. God told Samuel that he was the one. David would be the new king. So can we cheer for David, the new king? Yay, David! Woohoo! Yay, David! Way to go! Woohoo! Awesome! You see, God loves us no matter what. It doesn't matter what we look like or what we can do or can't do. It doesn't matter if you're short or if you're tall or good at soccer or have huge muscles or little muscles. God loves you no matter what. And God loves me no matter what. So let's pray and thank God together. If you're ready to pray, give me a big clap. Awesome. Dear God, thank you for loving us no matter what. We love you so much, God. Amen. Wow, that was so awesome, and I had so much fun with you today, and I'm gonna remember all week long that God loves me no matter what, and you can too. So, I'll see you later. Bye, friends. Wow, that was an incredible Bible story. I loved listening to it with you. And now, it is time to sing and dance to a super duper fun song, and I can't wait. So get up on your feet, and let's dance. Bye, friends! When I feel sad and I need a friend, God turns it all around and helps me smile again. When I get so mad or do something wrong, He loves me still, so I sing this